Today I am joined by one of Australia's best up and coming swimmers. He's already represented Australia at the World Championships in 2019 where he won gold as part of the 4x100 mixed medley team. He's one of the top ranked butterflies in the country. Matthew Temple, thank you for joining me today. Yes, thank you very much for having me. Let's go right back to the start. Obviously, Australia has such a long history in swimming. Where did the sport and really getting involved in the sport start for you? Um, basically through swimming lessons. Just started off swimming lessons, enjoyed it, made some friends and continually um, kept progressing. And that's how it pretty much started. We always camped um, along a river at Christmas time. So I had to learn to swim. Parents put me in lessons and that's how it all began. Do you have fond memories of those early days swimming? Like as a kid, did you just love being in and around the water as much as possible? Yeah, well, so of course, being in the river as well, it's enjoyable. And with your mates as well, it's definitely a bit of fun to be in the water. And then to learn how to swim, meeting new friends along that way um, in a small club, it's, yeah, I remember it making new friends and obviously right now you're a, you're a butterfly that's like where you've made your name but butterflies are not where people start with swimming was it just how did you get into butterfly in particular because it, from my own personal experience is obviously a much lesser level it, it's such a hard stroke to perfect and let alone to swim fast in yeah well, as, far, as far as i can remember um when i was younger swimming in a, my first squad I just always loved butterfly. I don't know what it was. I just don't know if it was the challenge. I like doing it or not many people doing it, but I think that was one of my better strokes as a kid and I've just stuck with it this whole time. And did you find a lot of um, the people you were swimming with at that sort of stage, just they weren't into butterfly, that you were kind of alone there in terms of wanting to pursue butterfly or have you found that that kind of perceptions changed a little bit? Um, I think because um, I was at a junior club when I first started swimming Mill Park and at that time, me and my mate, um, we did different strokes and a lot of focus at that club was a relay meet. So we'd be in the same relay but swimming different strokes. So I guess that's another reason why I've pursued butterfly to swim in the relays with other people, I guess. I guess one of the big perceptions about swimming, especially at that sort of young age, is the commitment, the training that it takes. What was your sort of training schedule like coming through school, 14, 15, when you're, you're really starting to take swimming seriously? How many hours a week? How early were you starting in the mornings? Um, so I probably didn't get competitive until around 15, 16. So when I was 14, I think I still played footy or I just stopped footy to um, continue more swimming. I don't remember the sessions, like the number of sessions, but there were an hour and a half sessions. Vaguely remember every morning. So it could have been roughly seven sessions, eight sessions for the whole week. And they were just one and a half hour sessions after school, pretty much before and after school. And as I continually progressed, they began to two hour sessions. And after I'd moved club, they began to two hour sessions um, twice a day before and after school. And how did that take it out of you, I guess? Like, because uh, chatting to a lot of people who do, whether it's swimming, diving, other sports where it's training before school, they sort of talk about how when they get to school during the day, they're just shattered a bit throughout the day and they find it hard to concentrate. Did you find any of that when you were training and especially in those early years of taking swimming competitively? Um, yeah, I think so. I think I was always tired at school, but it is what it is. It's a part of the job, I guess. So you have to continue to train and then continue to perform at school and then perform again back at training. Let's talk about footy because you mentioned footy. Uh, how long were you playing footy for and how was there any point there where you kind of wanted to take footy a bit more seriously than you did? Um, I think I played footy, ended up playing for two or three years. Um, it was more just um, social. My brother also played footy, so wanted to be a part of that. 
And then at that age where I knew I was better at swimming, I just made the call to pursue my swimming. Now, I was reading um, an article on the Swimming Australia website about how uh, there was a kind of the move that as a family, you moved to Nunawading and to try and work with a new coach and really try and develop your swimming a little bit more. Can you talk me through that move and what how that came about with you and your family? Um, so I think I was in year 12 when I moved and most of my friends from the previous club were getting to that stage where you either um, – 110% committed or that's it and I was at a small club in Greensboro DV Aquatic and it just got to that stage where I wasn't enjoying it anymore a couple of my friends left and so I had to make the call to stop or continue and so me and my family had a few discussions and we thought um, we may as well give it a crack and move over to Nutawati and it's been the best decision ever so far. How big a move was that for your family? Are we talking like li- literally packing everything up and going? And I guess how grateful are you for them to them for making that move? Um, yeah, just about. So none of Wadding was probably an hour from where I li- lived in Mill Park. And yeah, that was just about it. Packed up, moved everything over to that side of the town. And now we're pretty much operating from that side of the town and I couldn't have done it without them. It's a big part in my career and that's pretty much what's got me this far. And obviously a lot of that was to work with Scott Talbot a little bit and some of the other competitive swimmers there. Can you talk me through what the appeal was of that Nanawading program and why it was like, okay, that's the one. If we're going to move, that's the one to go to. Um, So I think when I was making the decision, there was three clubs, three Bigger clubs in Melbourne, um, MLC, which is, in, I think, in the eastern suburbs, Melbourne Vic Centre, which is based more in the city, and then Nutter Wadding. And um, I had a previous swimmer from Greensboro, Andrew Rice. He'd moved a year, a year before I had. And he said, and I told him, um, here's what's happening, potentially stopping, potentially moving. He said, um, He'd been at Nana Wadding for a year now. He said Nana Wadding's the best thing ever, gym, pool, coaches, the rest of the facilities and the staff. Um, you just have to give it a shot. Like um, where you are now, it's all right, but at Nana Wadding, you'll just improve. So we took on the advice and that's pretty much it. And I'd previously known a few people from Nana Wadding um, growing up um, in the school swimming um, scene. And so I knew coming here, I'd have a few mates already. And did you find that almost like straight away after that move, you kind of kind of started seeing the benefits of making it that move to Nunawading? Uh, I think it took a while because I was still going to school in Greensboro. So I think, um, like say some mornings it was 40 minutes. Mum took me every morning, every night to and from school, to and from swimming for six months while I didn't have my license. So that was real hard. But then after I'd finished school and then the, my family moved over, it helped so much because sort of everything was based over this side and my training had improved and um, we are seeing the results. So it was really beneficial. Before we get into some of, I guess, your, your big event results so far, I kind of want to talk a bit about your Olympics, the Olympics and what your memories of the Olympics are as a kid growing up. Do you have many fond memories of, say, watching the Olympics, watching the swimming on TV and going, yeah, I, I would like to be involved with that? Yeah, well, so funny enough, I'm not a big, I don't know much swimming history at all. Um, the rest of my teammates could tell me who won this, when, what they swam, the time when, but I have no idea to be honest. Um, I just remember like during school, watching the Olympics during the school holidays, that was one of the highlights because there was something to, on TV that was enjoyable to watch, always some sort of sport um, to watch. So that's what I recall doing on my holidays was just watching the Olympics. And then again, to represent Australia, at that event, such a big event, it would be a real honour. 
were there any names or athletes that kind of stick out in the memory of, uh, I know you're only 21, so probably looking at someone like a Kathy Freeman might not be there, but thinking of your Thorpes, your, um, your Hackett's, your people like that, uh, uh, sort of people like that kind of in your memory in terms of big profiles, the athletes who have competed at the Olympics? Um, well, former butterfly Jeff Hugel, I remember watching him swim the butterfly events and then also Eamon Sullivan in his freestyle events. But uh, that's sort of about it. I just remember those two significant names. Do you remember your first sort of big competitive win or like that first time that you you got out of the pool as a winner and you went, okay, I'm really enjoying this feeling. I want to try and replicate that. Do you remember what that felt like? So I think my first big win would have been at, um, I was 18 competing at my last age nationals. So this was my third age nationals and um being in the 17 18 year old age group the i was 18 at that stage so i was um i don't know what the word is i was top age so sort of gave me advantage on the rest of the field and when i was 17 i did a medal so knowing the next year i had a good chance and also my Times have improved, so I gave myself a good opportunity to pick up a few medals at that meet. And so I think that being my first um, national medal and my first gold national medal, it was something special to, to me. So that would have been the 100 butterfly at the national age groups. Have you always had that sort of competitive spirit that, like, that's what drives you wanting to win or are there other things that sort of motivate you when you hop in, when you dive into the pool? Yeah. So I'm really competitive. doesn't matter who or where it's just my, my nature and growing up with my brother, just always neck and neck. We want to beat each other, do something better. So I think that's where it's come from. And for myself, just to like at this stage, just to beat the rest of my competitors does that kind of spill over into everyday life and whatever it is with your sibling? Like it, it's always about trying to beat them or trying to be first? Yeah, just about from the pool to um, games with my girlfriend. I just want to win. <laughs> what games are we talking about here? Like are we talking like a, a little Mario Kart rivalry or something like that or are we talking some super serious stuff that you can get really intense with? No, just a bit of Mario Kart. That's about <laughs> it. Let's go through some of your, your your big results to date because obviously we've seen a real progression in the last, I think, three years in particular. I mean, we can go back to sort of the 2018 comms games trials where you sort of came, I think it was fifth in the sort of the butterfly there. Uh, what was that experience like when you were surrounded by, I guess, all this amazing Australian talent? Did you find that it really pushed you to the next level? Um, I think so. Con Games Trials, I remember the big stands, big lights. I think that'd been like my first major event other than um, sort of other than the nationals. And um, I remember going into it, um, having no expectations. Um, I knew there were a fair few people in front of me, but um, I think I just raced it how I wanted to race it. And I came away with a good result for myself. And I think that's when I knew um, how serious swimming is, how serious I am with my own swimming. And then that sort of gave me a few goals from where I need to be and what I need to get to be amongst those top couple. You would have been, I guess, sort of late teens at that stage. Was the Commonwealth Games a goal for you? Did you feel like you could have qualified for that or were you – kind of just really thrilled with your result at that trials, mate? Um, I would, Commonwealth Games was, I didn't think I had any chance and coming fifth was even better than I thought I'd do. I, that event was a real eye-opener and I think that's because I'd progressed so quickly up to that point and then I wanted to progress even more and even, like you could have said, 2020, I didn't have Olympics in my sights, 
And then when I made this world team, it sort of I sort of realized where I sit, and that's a special feeling. Let's talk about your progression to, I guess, the world champs. I mean, it kind of starts around that sort of 2019 Vic Open Championships where you named the, the male swimmer of the meet after taking out the 100-meter butterfly. That must have been a real boost. I mean, what, 2019, you're still only 19, 20 or so then. So to get that sort of recognition so early must have been a real thrill for you. Yeah, well, definitely. Even at the Vicks, you look up to the people who get um, swimmer of the meet and now I was I was named swimmer of the meet, so that's incredible feeling to be named that. And after seeing your results, you just want to get better and better and better. So I've pretty much gone um, all out just to drop the times, meet my goals. And then there's the the fantastic performance at the the World Swimming Trials where you and sort of David Morgan touched for equal first. Can you talk me through that sort of moment? And because it was kind of a point there where it was like, okay, Matt Temple, he's 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 the real deal now. He's he's going to be part of this Australian swim team for a while. Leading up to that, I knew I'd done a lot of race practice, so I knew uh, how I was going to race it and how I wanted to race it, and. Um, the previous six months, I knew I'd done all the work, everything possible to get into that point. So I knew at the trials I was going to have a good race. So I think my best was still in the 52 seconds before that meet. So I knew I was going to come out and race it fast, but I didn't know how fast. And then to finish the race and see that time, I was just gobsmacked. It was a quick time and a big PB for me. So I was, I was over the moon. Still didn't make the qualifying time for the world championships, but being the fastest, equal fastest butterfly, they took me for the relay, which meant I was able to swim the individual events. So that was when they called my name, that was pretty special. What was that world champs experience like? I mean, obviously, a lot of that um, competition kind of made headlines for other reasons, but I guess for you being part of that team and being able to experience that first big international meet as part of the swim team must have been kind of surreal. Yeah, it was so it was out of this world. Um, you get to see all the people who your friends talk about. Like I'm not big into the swimming history, but obviously Caleb Dressel, um, he was one of them. And um, just to see him walking around, it's just like, I'm here. He's here, I'm here. And it's just crazy to, it's just a crazy environment. Was it just you were in the the locker room just getting ready or in the change rooms and just seeing all these incredible athletes all around you? Was Were you just kind of, I guess, awestruck by the amount of people that were there? Um, yes and no. I've never experienced anything like that before. Previously, I had been to some World Cups in Japan and just to be at the World Championships, it was completely different. Um, I knew there was um, big names walking around everywhere, but I, um, I knew I had a job to do when I got there. And um, so I just concentrated on myself, my own processes, warm up, cool down. And I think that's what helped me get through the week with the results I had. What was it like being part of that swim team, I guess, for the real the first time at a big major event? Did you have many of the other members coming and talking to you, giving you advice, things like that? Yeah, everyone was so supportive. Um, I think it was a smaller team than what they'd normally take to world championships. I'm not sure if that was better or worse from someone else's point of view, but I think um, it was beneficial for myself being a new member to the team you got to speak to everyone. Everyone got around each other. Everyone had each other's back and they really helped me transition into the team. Now, I don't want to get your opinion on what Mac did and all that sort of stuff. I think everyone's, we, we've moved on from that, but I, I'm very curious to to know what the kind of the reaction was to the team when it was kind of, when it happened. We, we all kind of shocked at how big a deal it turned into and like, it just seemed like a, a pretty harmless thing to do at the time. Yeah, well, pretty much. We just, I think I was in the stands then. He copped a fair few boos from the crowd. Um, 
China had their big group up in their stands as well. So there was a few boos going around, but we just thought um, he'd get a talking to and that would be it. But um, world headlines everywhere. His um, social media blew up. We had no idea how uh, big it would get. And then his results came out and now it's he copped all the apologies. So it was just crazy to see um, how big of a news it was. I, I guess it's part of the thing with swimming that often it kind of goes under the radar. Unless it's the Olympics, it might not make headlines. But it, it kind of t- took big events like that for people to take notice of swimming. So I guess for you, is it nice to kind of be part of a sport where you can develop and really time your run towards, and say, an Olympics or a world championships? Or do you think that we as a country should be focusing on our swimmers a bit more year-round? Um, being in Melbourne, I think Queensland swimming's one of the um, maybe highest, most watched sports or most participated sports up there. Being in Melbourne, you don't hear any news down here of nothing. Um, I don't think many people know, especially in Melbourne, what it takes to be a swimmer. And um, Olympics is a special event for every Australian. So I think um, it's a good question. <laughs> um, I mean, there is a lot of pressure into the lead up of the Olympics from everyone, pressure to perform. But I mean, Olympics, I think, is most people's end goal, pretty much. That's the holy grail. And and I guess even though it's, like you said, it's the holy grail, do you think that we kind of focus on the Olympics a little bit too much when it comes to swimming? Like there's, as you mentioned, there's World Cups, there's World Champs. I mean, we've seen the International Swim League now has become massive. Do you think it's time to start broadening our perspective when we think of swimming as it's not just the Olympics every four years? I think so. But then I think some people find swimming hard to watch. All the heats and then for the final goes for for a minute. I think some people find it hard to watch. But other than that, I really enjoy swimming. Well, I mean, you've got Usain Bolt. He's only running for 10 seconds. That's over even quicker. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Let's talk about what the last 12 months has been like for you because I now I think we're, talk, we're talking on March 10, so it's pretty much a year since Australia went into lockdown for COVID for the first time. Um, what was it like for you when you found out the Olympics were being postponed a year um, at, for 12 months? I guess, as you mentioned before, you kind of said Com Games was on your radar, even 2020 wasn't even on your radar. But when you found out that you had that extra year, did you kind of feel like, Oh, hang on a sec, with this extra year, I could really push for the Olympics now? Yeah, so when we got told, I think I was um, feeling the best I'd ever felt in my career. I was fit, I was strong. I was I was planning, well, I was fingers crossed, I was hoping to swim well at trials in June and see the results. But when we got told, it was a bit disappointing, but... Everyone's in the same situation. So everyone's got an extra year. Doesn't matter if you're injured or unfit, got an extra year. Everyone's in the same boat. So it's not just us who have faced the consequences, if you call them consequences, but um, it was everyone. So I knew I had an extra year to um, better myself, improve as much as I can in that year. Those first, I guess, few months, I've spoken to a few other swimmers who have sort of talked about how there weren't many facilities available to them. They couldn't train as well as they wanted to. Did you? Were you able to take a break from swimming or did you almost not want to do that with how much, I guess, is on the line now this year? Uh, so we ended up having two months completely out of the water. And during those two months, um, I just thought, myself, thought to myself, I need to one up everyone out of the water. So when I, when I had time, when I could, I was always running, um, cycling, did my gym as normal and just trying to keep fit 
in as many ways possible to give myself the best chance to be fit when I was back in the water. And then I could start progressing, build into it, and hopefully get back to my peak fitness. Since you started swimming at 14, 15, would you have ever had a stage like that for two months out of the water, I guess? Would that be the longest break you've had in a while? No, nowhere near. You might cop two weeks over the Christmas holidays, but mm. that's about it. I've never had a break that long. Did you and feel better? I think it was better? pretty refreshing. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was pretty refreshing. But then although I was still doing activities outside of the water as much as I could, it was still – you still had the mindset that you were training every day. And was there much conversation with other members of, I guess, the swimmers in Victoria, the Australian swim team for – I guess those athletes who might have been on the opposite end to you going, oh, this will be my last Olympics or I might just make it about what the 12 months postponement meant for them and I guess how they reacted to it? Um, I didn't hear much from outside of Victoria, but I know us Victorians, none of Wadding especially, sometimes hooked up with Melbourne Big Centre and... Um, we did a few Zoom sessions, so we were connected over Zoom that way and we would do our core sessions over Zoom pretty much. So I knew all of us at Nunawadding were connected and we are still all aiming for the Olympics next year, trials next year. I guess something that most people would notice from if they had looked at photos of you, whether it's at uh, the World Champs or at other swim events, that the hair that you've got at the moment is a little bit longer than we might be used to. Uh, is that a, a lockdown? Is that a COVID-related growth that might be going soon? Or are you wanting to hopefully keep it under the cap for the rest of the year? Yeah, so first I had it off in COVID. All the hairdressers are shut, needed a haircut. So we had the clippers out one day. That was a bit of fun for the day. And now I've just continued it on. Not sure if it'll stay or go, but just just rocking it while it's here. Has it affected your swimming at all? Or do you find that you might be a bit quicker? I mean, we've seen a lot of Aussie athletes going with the mullet at the moment that it seems to be helping their performance on the field. Yeah, mate, you mainly see the footballers with the mullets, but I'm bringing it into the swimming. It's about time. I think it's about time we get some mullets and swimming. Usually it's the shaved heads, your Michael Quims and Jack Hugels, but it's nice that we're yeah. seeing the opposite. Yeah, a bit of fun. Now, one other thing I was reading about you was that, and you mentioned before you did a bit of cycling, was that you're very into the sort of cycling and BMX in particular, and you kind of had to move away a little bit from that to stop the risk of injury and swimming and things like that, that you had a few different injuries that kind of affected your swimming. Where did that love of BMX come from? Um, during school, you have no car. You just get around by your bike, I guess. And then me and my friend Mitch, we'd head down to the skate park or we'd build some jumps and it'd, it'd be fun. You'd ride there for a day, have some lunch. I don't know, you just hang out, I guess. Are you looking forward to seeing it in the Olympics this year, BMX? Yeah, I think it definitely should be good to watch. Seeing those names you've watched when a kid, when you're a kid, um, compete at the Olympics. But I don't think I'll be on the bike anytime soon. <laughs> no, ch no career change in terms of that? No, no hope. In terms of injuries you've had throughout your career, have you had anything major from swimming or was it just I think I saw a few broken fingers from riding your bike at various stages? Um, yes, yeah, so I broke three fingers last year um, mucking around on my car. I closed the bonnet closed the bonnet on my hand, which is pretty silly. But other than that, no major injuries. I think that set me back for six weeks which led into a short course nationals. But I did as much as I could in the water and out of the water to continue swimming. So I think I just did the kick, just kicking for six weeks. Not ideal, but you're going to make do. What's your favourite part about swimming? Is there a feeling or um, when you enter the water or when you win a race, is there something in particular that keeps you going back and keeps you wanting to swim? 
Um, I think seeing your own personal results. When you're swimming well, you're feeling good. Um, your mate's next to you, he's swimming well, he's feeling good. You both get around each other, support each other. So I think having that support through your mates, your coach, your staff, all on that pool deck watching you, you're all helping yourself and helping each other trying to achieve the end goal. I mean, we've seen, you mentioned, I guess, personal bests and consistently trying to better yourself. Sort of in the back half of last year, we saw you put together some quite incredible times, especially in the short course circuit. I mean, like I've got the the times right in front of me. You're in the top 10 for 50 metre butterfly all time. I mean, you're at the top of all the current short course rankings for butterfly in Australia. It must be really rewarding to see all that hard work really paying dividends. Yeah, well, definitely. And I haven't had a good crack at short course for a couple of years, broken hand being the year before. And I think we missed the year before that. So coming out and swimming those times and just proven to myself what the work I've done is, has done to get those times. And for us not training in a short course pool, um, skills underwaters is just sort of um, an eye opener what I need to practice on in everyday training. Do you find, uh, I guess, once you're in the pool that there's too much difference between, I guess, the long course and the short course? I mean, obviously, there's the shorter length of the pool, but long course, I mean, you're in the top 10 of all time and the 100 metres as well. It must be kind of really nice that you can translate between both easily. Yeah, I think there's a big difference because I use my underwaters um, for as much as I can because I find that's um, – I'm one of the better people at underwaters, so I use that to my ability. And in a short course pool, you come up at 15 and the walls come really quick, which is something I'm not used to training in a long course pool. So you're swimming – a wall, bang, turn, bang, turn, bang, turn. So it's just a lot of concentration, I guess. Do you have a preference of the, the 50, 100 or 200 at the moment or are you just happy to be in all of them? I'm um, definitely happy to be in all of them, but my favourite is the 100 metres. I think 200 is just at 50 metres too far and 50 is just a bit short to get into your rhythm, get into your groove. So that's why... My, my personal favorite's the 100, and it's also short and sharp. It's just up and back, and you're done. I guess looking at those times, I mean, it's a nice little rivalry you've got going on there with David Morgan, I guess, at the moment. You've got the – you share the spot in the long course rankings with the, the 51.47 for the 100 metres, and then I guess over in the short course, he's pipped you by a hundredth of a second in the 100 metres for the uh, – the current rankings and the, the all-time records. Yep. Are you looking forward to hopefully getting one over him at one point? Uh, well, fingers crossed. I think he's definitely got me covered in the 200, both short course and long course. Uh, my goals get a bit quicker in, in that event. But, um, yeah, I reckon it should be good. It's always good racing someone um, similar to you. I've looked up to David for the past three years as he's been one of the best in Australia for a while now. So to look up to him and race against him has been really beneficial to me. I've even learned a few things from him, which has helped me come up the ranks. I guess a lot of the time we see swimming as quite an individual sport, but what we see in like examples that you discussed then is that really you're all working together to try and better yourself. Is there a lot of that that goes on behind the scenes that we might not necessarily see? Um, yeah, I definitely think so. Um, we were on the Gold Coast three weeks ago now for a national event camp. So all the swimmers, I think there was eight, five male, five female, um, butterfly swimmers all training together. So we got to learn each other show each other new things and I think it was beneficial for everyone just new skills new drills and everyone can go back to their home environment and practice that in their own training 
A um, couple of last questions for me. I guess it's important to contextualize this with the Olympics that are coming up this year. What's your sort of schedule looking like in the lead up towards the trials? In It's Adelaide that the trials are going to be in, isn't it? Yeah, correct. Um, so we sort of have one event a month. So this month we're heading to Noosa for a training camp. April, we got the Nationals. They're in the Gold Coast. And then we have a few other state competitions after that leading into the trials, which I think um, race experience for me is pretty beneficial. Not having to be able, not having to race the past six months um, has been a struggle for me. So I think I need to get back into some racing so I know how it feels, how I'm going to race it and what I need to improve on during a race. What's it like going into an event like? Obviously, this will be, I guess, your first Olympic trials, but a trials for whatever competition it might be, knowing that there's so much pressure on this one swim. Do you do you get nervous and how do you cope with nerves? Um, I'm pretty good with my nerves. I might get nervous at the trials, maybe just because there's just that extra bit of pressure while you're there. But I think knowing I went into the world trials, knowing I had done the work, knowing I had everyone behind me. So I think that helped me get the final result. So I think um, a couple of races here, a couple of races there in the lead up to June, I think that will set me up perfectly. So I have confidence in myself to know I will race well. What's your pre-race routine? Do you have any superstitions or anything that you've got to make sure you're doing before each race? Um, no, no superstitions. Lately, we've been playing a bit of down ball just for a warm-up, just to get the body moving, but no, no real superstitions. Any music or anything that you're listening to before, before a race? Only the radio that's on the team bus. One thing that I ask a lot of athletes is about motivation to train and motivation to keep going. I mean, swimming is one of those sports where you, you're getting up, you're setting alarms 4.35 o'clock in the morning just to go and train every day. What gets you out of bed on those mornings when it's, especially in Melbourne and in Victoria, it's, it, it's in the single digits, the temperature as you're getting up in the middle of winter and you've got to go to the pool at 5 a.m. in the morning. What gets you out of bed? Um, I think it's just that environment. You have to have a good environment to train in. So my squad, my coach, gym coach, and the staff of the VIS all just make that environment enjoyable. If you're not enjoying it, there's really no point in doing it. It's just a hard slog then. So I'm really enjoying walking in, saying good morning, um, get to chat about the cricket that was on last night with the boys. And, yeah, so you just get in, have a good time, I guess. Are you a morning person? Do you do you cope well with the mornings? Um, once I'm in the pool, I'm all right. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a bit of skipping beforehand that gets me, but I'm not too bad. I don't mind it. Do you need a coffee or anything to get going or is it just is it straight there? Just six wheat bix and then I'm in the pool. <laughs> Very nice. All right, I've got one last question to finish off for you, um, one that I ask everyone to end off the, the interview. It's it's a relatively simple one but kind of makes you reflect on what you've achieved so far. Do you have a moment that you're most proud of so far in your career? Uh, I think it definitely have to be the sixth at the World Championships. That's my highest rank ever at a competition, like international competition, and... So I'm so close to my PB then. So I, I think that would have to be my most favourite, most memorable. Just that there and then most significant memory. Even though you, you I guess you won gold in the, the mixed relay there, was it kind of having that really good individual performance, was that almost a, a better thing to take out of the competition, knowing that you can compete at that level? Yeah, I definitely think so. Being a part of the team is also also very special. And I think there was eight of us that contributed to that mixed medley. So I was a heat swimmer in the morning and then the finals I swam at night. So to be a part of that was 
very special because there's nothing better than winning a gold for Australia. And I guess that's all I really need to touch on because we cannot wait to see how far you go this year, Matt, and we're really looking forward to seeing continually breaking those PBs and hopefully we'll see you on the plane to Tokyo. It's going to be a very interesting year for Australia's swim team and a lot of swimming coming up. I mean, hopefully we'll be seeing it on Amazon, the new deal that they've got there, which is really exciting for the sport, I'm sure. Has there been a bit of talk about that in terms of excitement that swimming is going into a new era here in Australia potentially? Yeah, I think so. I think it's a good setup they've got going there. We saw them, um, the camera crew, hanging around at the camp. So I think they're making a documentary while we're up there. And I think it should be good to see the results with what they come up with. Any particular teammates you reckon will be really good in front of camera? They'll be trying to get their head in front of the camera a fair bit for a doco? Uh, no idea. No idea. I think a lot of them are used to it these days, so I think it's pretty easy for them. All right, Matt, I'll leave you leave it there. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me. Good luck for the rest of this year. And, yeah, again, hopefully we'll see you over in Tokyo in July. Yeah, thank you, and thank you for having me.